Did you think I was not coming back? This has been a beautiful morning, and I thank those of you who have reflected on some of the thoughts from the earlier session. I'd like to do something that's very ordinary regarding the rest of Lent as we look at it. We hear the themes of Lent from the New Testament, the temptation of Christ, the transfiguration, the cleansing of the temple, the woman at the well of Samaria, the man who is blind, being given his sight at Siloam, the teaching of Jesus about the serpent and the God, son of man, being raised up as the serpent was raised up in the desert, the grain of wheat falling to the ground, given eternal life, and the resurrection of Lazarus. These are some of the themes that we'll be hearing with the Gospels during this season of Lent. We hear a temptation, we hear a transfiguration, we hear of cleansing. And in each of these, there are certain symbols that stand out that I thought we'd share and talk about. Because as we move into the season of Lent, we might want to just look around and say, what can remind me of Jesus? What in my life can put me into closer contact with Jesus? Sometimes we forget that God is so ordinary and so ordinarily available to us. We don't have to go on to Mount Sinai. We don't have to go to the Vatican or Lourdes to encounter God. He's with us always. That phrase that comes from the Holy Scriptures, Emmanuel, from Isaiah, and then Jesus being called Emmanuel, is not just a nice phrase. God with us means God with us. And it doesn't mean he came and left it means God with us, present with us. So sometimes we need to look at the things around us that can just put us in a state of prayer, in a state of contact. As Jesus went to the woman at the well, he said, I'm thirsty. And she talked about not having a bucket to go down into the well. So she also found it very difficult, the fact that a male was talking to a female, a male talking to a female who happened to be a Samarian. So Jesus talked her about her and her ministry and her life with all her husbands. And I say her ministry because eventually She's the one who went out and brought more Samaritans back to Jesus. And what was the conversation based on? Water. Jesus as the source of eternal life. Give me some of that water, sir, that you talk about. That if I have it, I'll never be thirsty again. Jesus was the water. Jesus was the source of refreshment for eternal life. When you turn your water on, your spigots, or step into your pools, or look at a spray from a local fountain, during the season of Lent especially, remember Jesus, the source of life. Jesus, source of refreshment. Jesus, source of security always with us, water. During the season of Lent, we hear that wonderful description once again in which the prophet is being sent to the ancestor of David and in Jesse's house, the prophet is being told to anoint the person who will be the next 
recipient of the Spirit who will lead God's people. His name happens to be David. So the prophet is sent to Jesse's home and he goes to all of Jesse's sons and it doesn't work. He says, it just doesn't click. You must have another son somewhere. And that was the son that he was supposed to anoint. But that son was just David taking care of the sheep out in the meadows. He says, bring that son in. And once he brought that son in, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon him and he was anointed with the oil of gladness, they say. Anointing, the oil of chrism, the holy oil of the anointing of the sick, and the holy oil of catechumenate. We use oil in our church as a sacramental of new life. We receive the oil of catechumenate when we're children, or young adults, or adults coming into the church. We receive the oil of chrism as a child, as a priest, when the altars of our churches are consecrated. Chrism, another oil. The oil of the sick and dying. Another oil that is brought to us as balm, as comfort when we are sick. When we are being placed in the presence of the Lord for healing or God's will to our bodies. Oil, a sacramental sign of the presence of God in our lives. When you're cooking, when you're in the sun, when you're going out before the sun, when you're making your hands smooth, when you're putting on your lips, oil. The ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, And obviously the ancient Semites used it. Oil, when we use it in our lives, presence of God. Imagine the next time you put oil in your pan. If it's olive oil, more pure, like we use here. Or if it's just regular oil. An opportunity to be in the presence of God during the season of Lent. Ordinary No extraordinary experience. Whether you're cooking for your family or yourself, whether you're bringing a dish of something or you're making a salad and putting oil on it, oil, a way of remembering God's presence, especially during the season of Lent, and with oil, especially at Easter. We have catechumens who are being received into the church. Jesus speaks about himself as a grain of wheat falling into the ground. If I took one grain from this head of wheat, just one grain, and I plant it, and I water it, and nurture it, it comes up as a head of wheat. This indeed is more than one grain. But unless one grain falls to the ground, we don't have wheat. Jesus used that example for himself. That unless he died and was literally planted into the ground, you and I wouldn't be here praying to him, speaking to him, because he would not have come back to us as a source of life eternal. So that cross that was planted in the ground on Calvary, and the body upon it that dies and was planted into the tomb comes back. Not as wheat, not as a resuscitated body, but as life eternal, Jesus. When you start your spring planting, put seeds in your gardens, or when you break a piece of bread, think of wheat, Think of the seed, think of the cross, think of the resurrection during this season of Lent 
a season that gives us so many symbols by which we can get closer to our Lord. Symbols that are ordinary and available to us every day. We have wheat, we have the cross, we have water, we have oil. All very ordinary ways in which we can get closer to Christ and remember him during this season of Lent moving into Easter. Untie him and let him go free, we hear, when Lazarus had died. Martha and Mary both come to him. If you had been here, my brother would not have died, and yet I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. Do you believe your, son, your brother will rise? I believe he will rise on the last day. And then Jesus reiterates the fact that he is the resurrection. He is the life. Unbind him and let him go free. Your sheets, your towels, your napkins, all pieces of cloth that can certainly remind us of Jesus' challenge to unbind one another from greed, from selfishness, and for life. When we look at the cloths in our homes, towels, sheets, curtains, a reminder of how we can meditate even for a moment on those elements and those objects as a way of bringing Jesus' words into our lives. Don't do it only here on Sunday or weekday Mass. Do it wherever we are. The Scriptures are alive, and you and I are living Scriptures. You and I are living the Word of God. Share those little elements with one another. Water, cloth, sometimes we get upset with ourselves when we're angry. We have to look at ourselves in anger. Of course, anger has a detrimental effect on the person who is angry and carrying it, as well as the target of our anger. If our anger is justified, we have to choose a just way to enact it, to enable ourselves to conquer the evil, not the person. Jesus experienced that when he saw his father's house being turned into a marketplace, when he got a piece of cord and made like a whip about it and whipped the tables of the money changers, letting the dove go free, letting the camels and calves of the animals for sale go free. A piece of rope like a whip, like a cord, can certainly remind us that anger holds us tight, but it needs to be expressed appropriately. It certainly reminds us that even Jesus got angry and acted appropriately. 
condemning the sin of turning his father's house into a marketplace. So when we look at a rope or a cord or a piece of whip or something like that, and I say it that way because that's what the scriptures say. He took a cord and made like a whip out of it. We have to think of Jesus. Maybe ask him for the strength to focus our anger appropriately, to look at ourselves, and sometimes the need to forgive ourselves when we're inappropriately angry, because you know as well as I do that most of our anger comes from our lack of control, not of ourselves, but of the situations around us. And when we can't control them, we dart out against them in anger. So maybe when we look at a rope or a cord during the season of Lent, we can ask the Lord to give me a healthy view of anger, a healthy view of myself to accomplish peace of mind and to imitate Jesus Christ. When Abraham showed his faithfulness to the Father, the God, God said, your descendants will be as numerous as the stars and the sand of the shore. You're in Florida. You're very familiar with sand. You have more sand than New Jersey will ever have. How Interesting, a symbol can remind us of the presence of God. Just the grains of sand, knowing that God knows every grain and knows every one of us as well. And of course, if I mix this with water, I make mud. If I use the water from my mouth, which is called spit, or if I use water from the earth, nevertheless, I've made mud. And that's what Jesus used on the eyes of the man born blind. He spit into the dirt, made a kind of mud, smeared it on his eyes, and said, go wash in Siloam which means scent. And he goes and washes his eyes clean and his sight is clear and renewed. Think of mud, think of sand, think of water as the many ways in which God's presence is with us and calls us to heal one another and to be healed just knowing he's with me, if he's with every grain of sand, he's certainly with me. I'm far more important than any grain of sand. And of course, light. Jesus as light of the world. Jesus as the source of eternal life and light. Jesus who comes to us, leading us and preparing us toward our renewal of promises at Easter. Easter vigil or Easter morning. As the light of the world. Jesus comes to us to encourage us to be the light for each other. When we light the Paschal candle at baptisms and at funerals, it reminds us of Easter, which reminds us of the presence of the Lord of light in our lives. Light. We all like I shouldn't say we all, 
many of us appreciate and like a candle in our homes. Enjoy it if you choose to. Enjoy any light. But take a second during this holy season of preparation and movement toward the lengthening of our days to the resurrection as a reminder of Christ as the light of our world and light of our lives. And how his insight gives us a greater appreciation to live our lives, to appreciate one another, seeing, not through the eyes of the blind man, but seeing through the eyes of faith, the resurrected Lord. All of the scriptures we said this morning, the Old Testament, the prophets, the teachings, the epistles, the acts, the gospels, lead to one event, the resurrection. With the light of faith, we look through the scriptures today, hopefully to see the light of Christ in our lives and the many, many opportunities we have to bring him in more meaningfully and to share him with others as we reach out to the poor, as we care for the the victims of various disasters, as we share of our abundance with others, be in the light of the world in Jesus Christ. Creation, fall, redemption. By the blood of the cross.